know the day destroys the night The night divides the day I try to run, try to hide Break on through to the other side Break on through to the other side Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Break On Through by The Doors and I'm going to give it to you in three levels. So like a real super simple beginner one. We'll talk a little bit about fancying up the rhythm as well. Then we're going to look at adding in the keyboard riffs, which are a little easier than the guitar riffs, but still fun to play. And then I'll talk about the actual guitar parts as well, because they are a little bit on the tricky side, but a lot of fun and well worth the effort. So on the most basic level, this song is an E minor chord with an occasional D. So all of those verses, we're just going to start off with a regular E minor, just start off with real nice simple down strums on the start of the bar. So we have this, you know the day destroys the night, the night divides the day, into a D, try to run, try to hide, back to E minor, break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Do, do, da, do, da, da. All of the riffs are all just over this in E minor. And all of the still. Chased our pleasures here. Dug our treasures there. Today you still recall the time we cried. E minor through to the other side. Stay on E minor for the rest of the song, yeah. It is that simple, and it's a really nice song to play along with the original recording. All you need is your E minor and your D. Now, at some point, you probably get bored of just strumming on the bar, and you want to do something a little bit more interesting for sure. So there are lots of different patterns that you can explore on the original recording. There's no strumming, so it's up to you to kind of get, get a vibe and pick a strumming pattern that you like. Really nice one to start off with just... I call it Old Faithful. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. You know the day destroys the night. Night divides the day. Try to run, try to hide. Break on through to the other side. It is you can keep it that simple. Just use that one pattern all of the way through. It'll sound really cool. The bit that you might want to pick up on is the strumming on the D chord, which has this one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. So that's you strumming on one. Then you use the outside part of your hand on beat two, and then strum again down on the end. So one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. Maybe you're muting on four as well. One, two, and three, four. One, and three, four. So something that might take a little bit of practice if you're not used to it, but just literally down, mute, down, mute. One, two, and three, four. 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 So kind of skill. It's a really, really useful one to develop, even not just for this song, but for loads of different songs. So it, the next kind of level up for a strummy beginner would be strumming Old Faithful for the E minors. So you've got this kind of movement there between the patterns, which can be quite a good thing. Now. The next step up is to incorporate some of the riff, and the keyboard has a different line to the guitar. It's a really nice way that they kind of play together. The most basic keyboard line is this. Second fret on the fourth string, second fret on the fifth string, open fourth string, second fret on the fifth string, play twice the second fret on the fourth string, twice on the second fret on the fifth string, Open D, open fourth string, and back to the second fret. But it's the rhythm that's really the key thing here. So you end up with this. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. And again, nice and slow. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. 
just that bit at the end of the bar you might find a little tricky. I'd recommend using down, 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 up, 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 down, down. So you're only using the up beat, the up picks on the off beats, on the and. So if I count it for you again, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. Down, 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 up, 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 down, down. So it's almost like you're moving your hand continuously or at least moving the pick directions continuously. And that's kind of the main keyboard riff outside of that D chord. Now, there's some simplified ones later in the song as well. The keyboard part goes to a much simpler. So literally second fret on the fourth string, second fret on the fifth string, open fourth string, and back to second fret on the fifth string. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Does that for a few different choruses. Mixes it up during the song, which is kind of cool. And another common one for the organ part is this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Open E string, second fret, fifth string, open D string, fourth string, second fret, fourth string. One, two, three, four, one. So the next kind of step up on your journey will be to incorporate the keyboard riff and then the chord stabs on the D. So and you want to spend a little bit of time working on that. If you're in a two guitar situation in a band or whatever, you'd have one guitar doing that, doing the keyboard part, if you don't have a keyboard part player. If you've got a keyboard player, he'd be doing that. Uh, the, the other, the proper main guitar part that as played on the record part, there's two. It's one for the verses and one for the choruses. The chorus one's a little trickier. The verse one is this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. So it's different notes to what the keyboard player is playing, even though the rhythm of what they're doing is very similar. Again, nice and slow. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. That's open, second fret, fourth, open thicker string, second fret, fourth string, open fourth string, second fret, fifth string, two picks on the second fret on the fourth string, second fret, fifth string, open D, and then a slide down from 12th fret or around there, somewhere just above the 12th fret probably. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One thing I want to point out here, if you're playing this in a band, one of the key things here is being consistent with the riff. It's not like a game where you should try and do as many variations as the riff as you can, especially if the organ player or the other guitar player has taken a solo. You want to try and keep that riff real nice and tight and the same all the way through. Okay, a lot of guitar players I see out like in little pub bands or whatever, they treat these kind of songs as an excuse to do lots of variations and see if they can make it real fancy. But actually the job here is to play it real simple and real straight all of the way through. That's kind of what makes this music a bit mesmerizing and hypnotic. That's kind of the cool thing about it. So don't try and treat it as like a, yeah, an excuse to play more notes than you probably should. So that's the riff for the verses. The D chord, you'd still be... <laughs> using the little, the palm mute thing for the D chord. But then we go into the chorus riff, and that's this. There's quite a lot going on. Let me take it through nice and slow for you. So, open E string, open A string. I use my second finger on the first fret of the fifth string and slide it up to the second fret. Down, down, up, slide. Then up pick on the open D, second finger, second fret, fourth string, flick off back to the open. So 
sorry, picking the down, the, the second fret, and then flicking off. One, two, and three, and four, and then we've got open G string, picked with a down, up pick on the second fret, flick off, back to the open. This is on the third string, open, second, open, second fret on the fourth string, open D, and then we're playing the second fret again. So this is up, up, down, 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 up, slide, up, down, flick off, down, up, flick, up, up, down. The key thing here again is keeping the hand moving consistently. So you're always doing down picks on the one, two, three, or the four, and an up pick on the off beats, the ands. Now, if you happen, there's a lot of hammer-ons and flick-offs here that I notice sometimes when I'm playing, I change it up a little bit and I might do a hammer-on or a flick-off in a different place. I don't think it really matters. The, the key thing, like I said, keeping the hand moving and making sure the rhythm of the riff is correct. Exactly the picking, if you pick some or do a hammer-on or flick-off, it's not really going to be a massive deal. So let me play through a few times nice and slow for you again. Three, four... One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. A little bit more at full speed. I mean, this is a really, really cool jam song. I've spent a lot of my teenage years playing this song. It's just so much fun. It's mostly E minor. It's really, for those of you that are a bit more advanced in your theory, it's kind of an E Dorian thing because you've got the D chord there as well. So you're kind of thinking D major scale if you want to get into major scale stuff, or you can think E minor pentatonic or E blues. All of that stuff will work. The E minor is a little bit majory as well, so you can get away with a lot of the kind of standard blues licks. The best thing to do here is experiment and make sure if you're playing in a band, you're listening to each other and that you try and do things that complement whoever's doing the solos. There's a lot to learn in this sort of stuff. It's not just like a simple two chord tune, although it can be for a beginner. There's a lot of really interesting things to check out if you scratch beneath the surface a little bit. So look, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. There are plenty more songs like this over on the website, so do go and check it out. If you're up on YouTube, really appreciate your support. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and let me know if there's any other tunes that you'd like me to do in the near future. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you for more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.